Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I want to tell you guys um, another story time, but at the same time, I want this to be informative to a lot of people out there about service commitments. So today I'm going to tell you guys a story about a service commitment. So it was it was years ago, but I was probably four years out of the military and I signed on with this hospital and it was quite the quite the load. Um, there was only two biomeds. One of them was Biomed 1. He was one of the best workers I've ever worked with. But still, it was a lot of work for two people. And I happened to sign in at the time of the year when all the contracts were due. And it was an absolute nightmare with these contracts because of all the red tape that this corporation put on. Now, this company is um, a very large for-profit hospital uh, system. And I'm not going to say their name, although I should call them out for some of the stuff that they did but anyway uh, this is a story about a service commitment and my first time that I had to sign one or they tried to get me to sign one so this was uh, we did all the math I'm, I'm a numbers guy and one of the things I love going over is uh, the cost of a contract versus for first look contracts and uh, the cost of, you know full service contracts, you compare the numbers. And as you move up in the Biomed community, you're gonna have to start doing this stuff, either as a Biomed 3 or as a Biomed manager or whatever, you're gonna have to do cost analysis on a device or a string of devices and um, what it would cost to go to training. And this, is, this can be quite the skill set is to do cost comparisons and use that to proposition your management to pay for schooling. And it depends on the hospital, but sometimes they will want you to sign a service commitment. Now that can't, it's not necessarily a bad thing, so don't judge me based on that. But this particular hospital, what they wanted me to do is go to GE Anesthesia School, which is about uh, $13,000. And I did the cost analysis based on the first year alone if I remember right, they were between three and four thousand dollars in the black if they just sent me to schooling instead of paying for the full service contract to uh, just have the units PM'd. It, it wasn't even a really a full service contract. It was just basically a PM. But we had so many devices that it made more sense financially to send me to school. And it's not a school necessarily that I wanted. I've, I've kind of throughout my career stayed away from anesthesia, but I would be very humbled and grateful if they sent me to school. Um, I just didn't want to be an anesthesia tech the rest of my career. So that's why, you know, I, I made sure to keep my distance from it. But anyway, um, so these guys, they all, they all got the quotes and stuff uh, without even asking me. And it came out to be about three to four thousand dollars. They would be in the black, which means they'd be ahead if they sent me to the $13,000 school versus paying somebody to take care of their equipment. And that is normally exceptionally good. If you can pay off training in the first year, you are doing very well. And that, in all honesty, that's how you should handle contracts. If you can pay off the training in a year to year and a half, solid, do it, train your people. But uh, anyway, what happened is they, started hawing and humming around about the training. Uh, mind you, this is the training that I didn't necessarily really want to go in on. And um, what they ended up doing is they said, okay, we'll sign a two-year service commitment. And uh, I, I asked them, why is there a two-year service commitment? See, the way the service commitment works is they will front uh, thirteen or $14,000 and they will prorate it based on the, the service commitment. And let's say it's a $15,000 school plus uh, cost to, to do the training. So it's about 15K. Well, what they'll do, these sneaky guys, is they first told me it was gonna be two years service commitment, which baffled me because uh, they paid off the training in the first year alone. 
So if you pay off the training in your first year and I can prove it on paper, then why make them sign a, a second year commitment? It doesn't really make sense. See, hospitals, they budget for training. It's not like this is, you know, um, something that's completely a, an expense. Training is, it's financially good for a hospital to prove that we've got X amount of dollars all, allotted towards training our people. So they budget for it. And it's, it's not like it's a cost like you and me would see a cost. To them, it's like a tax write-off slash it's a marketing thing that, hey, we're training our people. Plus, for certain um, qualifications like magnet certification, uh, they have to allot X amount of uh, dollars towards training anyway. So, But anyway, we went up to HR to talk about our two-year uh, service commitment, and I was explaining to them, and they didn't really like that. Um, that I was even questioning them, uh, but I'm a, like I said, I'm a numbers guy. It just doesn't make sense. It's not that I planned on leaving anywhere. I was quite happy where I was at, but I just told them, why am I signing a two-year agreement? It should be a year or even a year and a half because uh, you're getting your money back. But when we got up to HR, the director kind of smiled at the, uh, at the HR lady and she put in front of me a three-year service commitment. Now let's go over the math on this. It's about $15,000 with all um, costs associated. Three year service commitment. So that means after the first year, they paid for the training, all right? And they're in the black, they're, they're ahead. By the second year, I would be, you know, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 in the black for them. They're saving that money. It's, it's money that they would have had to spend otherwise. By the third year, they would be thirty some thousand dollars ahead. And I, I did all this on paper and I showed it to them. And I said, guys, I'm not gonna sign a three year commitment. That's insane. For a thirteen thousand dollar school. Now guys, there are some schools that by all means sign that two or three year agreement. If they're gonna send you to like MRI school or something, that's like what, fifty or so thousand dollars? Yeah, of course. Go ahead, sign that three year commitment because that is a career changer. If they're gonna send you to an MR school, I'll tell you right now, that is a career changer. Anesthesia? Anesthesia is not a career changer for a senior level biomed. I've already had my hands on anesthesia for years and it was nothing special. I mean, I could already solve the problems. It's just when it comes to doing the PMs and stuff, I wasn't gonna do that. Um, I wasn't gonna put my name on those work orders. So. I went up there and I talked to the HR people and I told them that this doesn't make sense. It's unfair and they didn't care. They, they wanted me to sign it and I told them I wasn't going to sign a three year commitment. It, it just wasn't going to happen. And we were running up on the month that they were going to have to pay to have somebody come out and service their equipment because everything was coming due. And uh, I told them one year is one thing, two years a whole nother thing, three years are unacceptable. And you know I, I showed them on paper exactly uh, what I was talking about. They didn't care. So the fallout for this, obviously I'm not employed at that hospital anymore. And there's a pretty good reason because after this happened, then uh, they, it was like, I don't know, maybe a week later, they gave me my review, you know, your 90 day or, or four month review or whatever it was. And anyway, it was on a 4.0 scale, okay? And anything less than four, marks you down and if you got to less than like a 3.5 or a 3.2 on your rating then you are put on a further probation for another like 60 days so anyway what happened is uh from there on out uh they had it out for me it was pretty plainly one example was on my final rating for let's say attendance for attendance they marked me a two out of four it's kind of curious you marked me a two out of four because that marks me at half the value so you you're gonna my score is gonna go down you know that uh, and they said it's either a one or a two because either you're here or you're not and I said well I'm I'm salary I clock in once per day I was putting in nine to ten hours a day because I was missing traffic but it also gave me time to work on the contracts I got called in twice because I was always on call there when you only have two biomeds you're gonna be on call every day every single day and that's fine 
uh, that was perfectly fine with me. I was, I was going to take on that responsibility as my hospital. And um, I came in twice, which was every single time that they called me. And uh, one time I came in to help them with uh, an HVAC system that was down. And another time it was for uh, a nitrogen tank system that uh, had a problem. Both of them weren't really biomed, but, you know, we're a team, especially in that small of a facility. And, you know, I'm definitely going to come in and see what we can do to, to help them out. But he marked me down as a two out of four. And I explained it to him that you, you can't do that. It's a 4.0 scale. Anything less than a four is marking somebody down. I mean, a two to a four would be like no good versus good. But a one or a two out of four, that just doesn't make sense. You mark somebody down a two out of a 4.0 scale, you are purposely marking them down. And I mind you, I didn't take any days off. I came in every time they called me. And... Uh, that kind of set the stage for what was going to happen next. Um, so they, they got me marked down on enough stuff that uh, I was put on the further probation. And as soon as that happened, and as soon as like they wouldn't listen to reason, I started looking for another job. And I ended up with one of the best jobs I've had yet, which is I ran the, uh, I ran the operating rooms for a medical university. And... That was probably one of the best, most rewarding jobs I've had in my entire career. It taught me quite a bit, and uh, I stayed there for four and a half years, something like that. But uh, this hospital, this for-profit hospital, I was there for five and a half months, five months. And uh, they put me on extended probation because I wouldn't sign a service commitment for three years because I did the math. And I proved to them that after the first year... They had made their money back and then some. So guys, be aware. Service commitments, they're sometimes necessary. Absolutely. And I would have signed a one-year, maybe even a two-year commitment. But a three-year, don't commit for three years, guys, unless it's a career-changing school. Okay? So they try and get young techs on this all the time. And if it's a $15,000 commitment and I'm there for one year out of three, well, I would have had to pay back about $10,000. And here, after the first year, they made all their money back. So you see where the scam can be, guys? So read your service commitments. Read every paperwork that they want you to sign. Read it in detail. And if they want you to sign it there on the spot so that you can go to a school this weekend, say, no, I want, I want to take this paperwork home. I want to read it in detail. Maybe... Even consult a lawyer. If it's a very expensive school and, and you're on at risk for, for um, a high commitment like twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, you might want to have a lawyer look over that paperwork. Some of those commitments might not even be legal in your state. All right? So read your paperwork. Do not sign long service commitments if you don't need to, especially if it's not a, a school that you requested or if it's a career-altering school. Okay, some of these hospitals just are a little scandalous, but uh, just a warning to you guys, read your paperwork, don't sign long commitments. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you all have a, a very nice afternoon. I know I am, I'm going to go outside and chillax in the, in the mini pool that I got. If you guys haven't seen it yet, I've got a, uh, another channel online and uh, I go over small projects like the mini pool that I just built. And uh, maybe I'll post a link to that in the description down below. But uh, thanks for watching, guys. It's always a pleasure doing these videos for you.